Hi, I'm Jenny with Garden Gate Magazine, and it's mid-April, so in our Zone 5 garden, it's mid-spring, and it's time to do a little bit of spring cleanup. So I'm going to show you a little bit on how we work on some of the plants that here, here in our garden, and I'm going to start here with this little ladies' mantle. And with ladies' mantle, you get a lot of dried stuff that's in there, and uh, so it's easier to just take a nice long rake like this and pull out some of that dried stuff. You don't have to worry too much about some of these stems, but you could go back and cut them off if you wanted to. Or I kind of like these little, um, they're, they're called honey badger gloves, or I've got wolverine gloves that have these little claws on the end. And it makes it just real easy to just kind of grab in there with your hands and scrape out some of those dried leaves so that that new foliage will come up and look nice and fresh. And if you want to, you can go through um, I li also like my uh, battery-operated head shears, and you can snip off some of those longer stems. And I'm going to scrape that all out. And when I get here, I like my spring bulbs to come up and be look not through the bunch of, of uh, dead leaves, but if I can get them get this all kind of cleaned up, then they look a little prettier when they're coming, coming in. And I might rake some of the bigger stuff off and put it in the compost pile, but some of these little leaves in here will just sort of crumble. And if I leave them down on the ground, then it just looks like mulch. And I don't have to pick it up at all. It'll deteriorate and be good for the soil. And if you don't get it all, that's okay. But we're going to clean off some of that so it looks just a little bit nicer and neater. Now next I'm going to move over to this spirea here. And as you can see, it's starting to leaf out, but it's still got a little bit of dead stuff on the top. And some of that burned off a little bit in the winter. So I'm going to take my head shear, and I'm just going to shear right off. You can go down to take off about two-thirds if you want to go that far, um, or just take off a little light over the top. But I'm going to take mine down a little bit. And that just makes it a little nicer and I can't get a better mounded shape on it for when it grows up. If I wanted to make it look a little bit neater, I can kind of pick through with my little, my clawed gloves and fish out some of these leaves. They will also break down easily enough and you wouldn't have to, but if you just want to see it look, a, or if you've got really big leaves that are caught in those stems, it's kind of nice to get those out. Okay, so I've moved on to another section of my garden. Uh, I've got some little bunny uh, penicetums under here and grasses that can actually stay um, put for a long time because they're, they're slow to come up in the spring. But I'm gonna go ahead and shear these off. Um, I'm gonna leave about an inch or so uh, of this dead stems. That way if we get a late snap of a frost, um, they'll have a little bit of an insulation layer. But I'm gonna use my head shears and I'm gonna come in from the back. Okay, and that leaves a little tuft of dried stuff, and I could, if I wanted to, I could mulch with this, um, or I can pull it off and put it in the compost pile. And then uh, new growth will come up right through that and cover all that over. Um, so now I'm going to move up over to uh, my betony here. This is humulo, and um, sometimes the stems will pull right out. So if you want to, you could just kind of pull through and, and lightly tug at all that dead stuff. And you can see all that new growth coming in, a little rosette. So I can do that either way. I can use my little raking gloves again too, but 
these are easy to pull. And some of them, if they don't come out, I'm going to take my little shears again and kind of top that off. And there we go. And now those little stems can come right up and grow. So I'm going to finish this little section here. I got some Allium Millennium here, and last fall, uh, when it was done blooming and the flower heads dried up, I left them on there because it's kind of interesting for the winter and kind of nice with the dusting of snow or frost. Um, now, if you have an Allium that's going to recede, Millennium is a sterile uh, cultivar, but um, if you have Allium that's going to seed out, you might want to take those um, seed pods off in the fall. But since I don't, I've got uh, left them up there and they're dried, and sometimes they'll just tug right out but I'm going to shear these off. And I'm going to do that just above the um, length of the uh, foliage that's coming up so I don't cut that off. And then we'll just kind of shake out some of that loose stuff and any leaves that might have caught in there. We'll pull those out. And right here in front, I have an Artemisia. And I trimmed that back a couple weeks ago. Um, so you can see some of the little stems there. But as, as you can tell, it's going to grow right up over the top of those stems and I'll never see them at all. But we're going to move down a little bit further. And here's how it looks when I, when, before I did the trimming here. But I'm going to go ahead and again with my shears, if I wanted to, Sometimes you'll get a few little um, buds that'll come up on the woodier, woodier stems, but it looks like this has died off most of the, most of the way. So I'm just going to cut it off like that. Sometimes if it, it helps, it might help to scoop your hand up underneath and go from underneath so that you get all the ones that are laying there on the ground. Or from the back even. They might break off, in which case that's an easy way to go about it too. If they'll just snap off, you can just do it with your hand. And look, there's another betony we can kind of tug up. And there we go. You pull that off and take it off to the compost pile. Okay, our next little perennial is this candy tuft right here. It's a very early spring bloomer, and it's semi-evergreen here in zone five. Low, um, a big, uh, larger zones, zone six and above, you might get this to be a nice evergreen uh, mound of foliage all winter long. But here it tends to burn and turns a little purple. So uh, it's best actually if I wait a little bit longer on this, or until right about now, so I can see that I've got buds coming and I've got little stems, and then I can just cut out all that stuff that looks a little purple, doesn't look a little healthy. If it looks brown and dried up, go ahead and cut those off. Now I could shear it clear down if, if it looked really bad all the way, but usually I've got some foliage that's down in, in the base here that still looks green and pretty. So. And you'll see, like say on this branch, you've got a bunch of good little green branches and one that just isn't that nice. I'm going to cut him off. But I don't want to cut them all off because I don't want to lose that flowering bud. And we can just kind of get some of those leftover stems. And there we go. In a, about a week or two, that'll all fill out and look nice and mounted. And then we can move on to, just like a lot of perennials, it's pretty much the same technique. So for the aster that's right in front of me here, um, I'm just going to take a shears and cut that right off. Super simple. And the same way with this Coreopsis that's under here. Just like the, the, uh, the uh, 
artemisia that we did before, you'll kind of lift up those dead stems. If they break off, that's super, makes it easy. And you can kind of just push it out of the way. And here I've got a geranium. That's the same sort of a situation. And much like the lady's mantle that we did before, this might even just rake out. And you can trim some of those little last stems off. And then you'll get that great little rosette of purple foliage that comes up in the spring. So I've moved over into my shade bed. I've got some hellebores and some bernera and some uh, pulmonaria. Um, in, in zone five here, um, hell, hellebores don't stay nice and, and evergreen all winter like um, in other, other places they are a little bit warmer. We tend to get a lot of dead foliage. So with my hellebores, even though they're blooming there, um, I'm gonna go ahead and cut off all this dead stuff that's in here. Now, if I had any little green leaves that might be in there, I might leave them, but I don't on this, in this case. It was a tough winter. <laughs> but you, see, you can see there's some green stems, and, and, but they dried out a little bit on the actual leaf portion. But you've got some new foliage coming up. And then we'll just, that way the blooms look a little bit prettier. They're not all trashy right there. So then I'm gonna move on to uh, the Pullman area, which is in the front. And we're gonna go with our raking leaves again, so much like our, and we can just pull on this and rake away. Pulmonaria and Bernera here tend to get a little, a little moldy underneath. They're a little bit fuzzy. So good. But just use a nice soft raking motion. And you can pull up most of that. And again, if you want to snip off some of those little longer stems, you can certainly go back to scissors or shears. And this actually goes pretty fast. And there we go. I'm almost done with my spring cleanup now, and so everything will look really pretty. And then some of the spring bulbs that I have coming up here and there will look really nice.